Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I uh, just got five morning. guys here talking about the internet and the uh, the real estate marketplace here that we see today. Um, let's go over, I guess, real quick who everybody is. Um, Ryan, can you get us started? Just give us a brief introduction. Yeah, sure. My name's Ryan Nicholas. I am a realtor in Northern Virginia with the Damon Sells Homes team at Cole Banker Realty. Colin. My name is Colin Myers. I'm a residential loan officer uh, with Monument Home Loans based out of Arlington, serving customers in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. John? Good morning. Uh, my name is John Partridge. I'm the president and founder of Honeydew Today, handyman on demand, serving all of Northern Virginia and beyond. And Diego? Hello. Morning. Uh, Diego Fernandez with uh, Cooper Flooring and Design. We supply for Northern Virginia, Maryland, and DC. Great. My name is Tony Annarelli. I'm an insurance agent with Liberty Mutual, helping with all personal lines insurance, including auto, home, liability, and life. Um, we are all here today to talk a little bit more about the upcoming spring real estate market, right? Uh, here we are almost into February, January 29th, 2021. Uh, we've had a very exciting year um lots of lots of changes lots of both positive and negative um so what i wanted to do to kind of kick off our conversation today is maybe you know ryan let's start with you and, and let's let's hear some let's hear some covid war stories uh because I'm, I'm sure everyone on the call has a few yeah uh war stories is a, is a good way to put it because this was a year unlike any other uh since COVID has hit uh i've got plenty i'll start with one uh you know when COVID hit everything changed right how we sold houses how we viewed houses and in march and april of last year a lot of people were scared rightly so and, and the spring market last year kind of screeched to a halt um and then as we learn more about coronavirus and how to go out in public safely with social distancing and masks, the spring market picked up again in, uh, in May sometime, I would say. And some would say it hasn't really stopped since then, even through the holidays and uh, the first few weeks here in January, uh, we've been crazy busy. So, uh, but with that, we had to innovate how we were marketing homes. You know, we, we, we stopped doing open houses very quickly. And uh, instead, we tried doing virtual open houses, right? So one funny story is I uh, had a new listing, a nice townhome in Fairfax City. And this was soon after COVID hit, started doing a virtual open house. And I had my phone like the, the wrong orientation for like the first five minutes of the video. <laughs> and, uh, and luckily, my wife, who's a gem, texted me and I saw like your video sideways. So like, All right, I got to put it up right. I didn't know you could do Facebook Live. Yeah, uh, landscape mode. So anyways, you know, we, we learned and innovated throughout the process. Uh, and that was a, a learning experience for sure. And since then, we've innovated even further. Rather than a virtual open house, uh, what we've been doing is a virtual on demand open house where we get a 3D virtual reality tour of the homes that we list. And if you know what I'm talking about, the little dollhouse, and it's for some people, they find it hard to navigate online and don't spend a lot of time in that. I started doing a video personalized guided tour through the 3D model uh, to really personalize it and sell uh, the house. Is, that, is it like you can zoom in and zoom out and kind of go to different rooms? Yeah, exactly. You feel like you're right. there and you can even put on uh, virtual reality goggles and you be in virtual reality inside the house. It's pretty cool. Next, next level. That's awesome. Yeah. So Colin, I mean, when someone's buying a home, right? I feel like the two most important things are going to be finding the home to buy and financing the home to buy. Right. So right. why don't you, you know, piggybacking off of Ryan, like, what do you think, you know, has been maybe the biggest change or just what are some interesting things, you know, here we are in 2021 um, and, and key differences from maybe let's just call it a, a year or two ago. Sure. So, First and foremost is definitely the interest rates. Uh, you know, just due to COVID, they just dropped. And so that's obviously not a war story in the least bit, but that's been the biggest change from a year and a half ago or so, because right now we're seeing rates still in the high twos, low threes. 
And if you would have come to me and said a couple of years ago, hey, I want to buy a home. All right, well, let me get you a low rate of 4%. So, you know, that's, that's uh, the, really the biggest change. In terms of purchase applications, they just have not stopped throughout COVID entirely, uh, which is great. It really shows the resilience of our market in the DMV. Um, but, you know, it's uh, just really nonstop in terms of uh, kind of piggybacking of what Ryan said of, of not being able to have too many open houses in person. I've had a number of clients who have just bought the house sight unseen and um, not even taking an actual tour of it to be able to walk around, but it ended up working out and they absolutely love it. So that's obviously been a huge adjustment this year, hearing clients say, hey, Colin, I haven't seen this house in person yet, but I wanna buy it and I wanna offer $20,000 over asking. So, you know, <laughs> that's, that's definitely out of the ordinary from really what we've seen in years past. Um, but you know, it's, I, it, it's worked out for people. Um, so it, you know, the, the purchase market is just still going strong and I just haven't seen a drop in it at all in, uh, 2020 and beginning of 2021 for that matter. I find it hilarious that, you know, my fiance doesn't want to spend uh, 50 bucks or a hundred bucks online grocery shopping for produce because she wants to see it in person before we buy it for a hundred bucks and here, here you are, have people going, Hey, Colin, can I get, um, can I get a uh, $850,000 to this house? I haven't seen it yet, but, but I think it's going to be good. Pictures look great. Yep. Yep. Looks good. <laughs> Back on that it. That's awesome. So, so obviously, you know, I don't know. I feel like it's, it's when, when someone, if we're looking 10 years into the future, right. People are going, Oh, the year of COVID, right. 2020. And, and I don't know, I feel like it, it, it makes you think of struggle and hardships, but I mean, from a business perspective, and I guess where we live, right, where we're located, Northern Virginia, um, the types of businesses we operate within, I mean, John, Diego, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to know some of the answers to the, the question here, but um, I mean, what has it been like experiencing, you know, 2020 up till this point? Uh, within your, your respective businesses? You know, the whole year of 2020 has been, a, a, I think, Tony, a process of becoming more familiar with the virus. And there's an old saying that familiarity breeds contempt. And if you look back in March, you know, we did one of the first COVID cleanings at a biotech company up on Route 270 in Maryland back in March. And back then, oh, there's a live, you know, there was somebody who had the coronavirus there. And we sent in everybody with, you know, biohazard suits and respirators and, you know, we, we cleaned the thing. And then a few months later, you know, we're at the other end of the spectrum. By the time we get into the summer and people are tired of being quarantined, they, they, I think they think they deserve a participation trophy for being in quarantine. And it was a regular thing, you know, Diego can attest to this, where we're calling up uh, uh, clients and asking them to please have their kids refrain from jumping on our handymen and playing with them and trying to help them repair things, which is a common thing. All, all of our people are very friendly and all have families. They're good with kids, but you know they've got the, they're, you know other people's kids wanting to follow them around while they're you know they're all home. They're not at school anymore, and so we went from one end to the other with the challenge, and it was uh, you know it. it uh, you know, it, it, it was concerning <laughs> at, at different times, but you know, you, you get through it. And I think everyone's finding a happy medium water finds its own level. And we're, we're figuring out how to deal with this virus in a responsible way and still go about, you know, conducting day-to-day -day life. Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, as for me, uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, we had to find, find out someone on somehow how, how to make this happen because everyone was all over the place. And I sat down and I actually uh, contacted uh, my top uh, suppliers, my, my top uh, referral bases. And once I had a conversation with them, I actually uh, was able to just manage somehow uh, in plan, okay, we're, how are we gonna do this? Are we gonna still work with the crews, still get customers? How are we gonna get customers? And, and, and uh, this was great because I, I sat down with uh, uh, the top producers 
and and we just talked about how we're gonna make this happen. And and, and it was very interesting. And like uh, Ryan was saying, you know, all this virtual uh, purchasing and all that. I went through that. I had clients that I saw the house first before they did. And I had clients that were telling me, hey, my beautiful hardwood floors, how are they? Are they good to go? And I'm like, uh, no, they're not hardwoods, they're laminate. <laughs> it's like, they look like hardwoods, yes. Or, you know, virtually, yes, it's a lot different. So there, there was some negative and positive things, uh, just trying to manage how to work and go about, you know, going to a house, telling the customers, hey, we're gonna be in your house for a couple of days, you know, make sure you have everything cleaned out. They were concerned, we were concerned. You know, I have to be concerned for my uh, guys also, my crews. So it, it was, you know, it was very tough at the beginning for the first month that uh, uh, like the U.S. actually, uh, you know, shut down. We went to page two and, and it took about a month to get it going. Uh, but like Ryan and Colin said, after uh, that one month went by, it's like someone opened up a, a, a faucet and just sales started going and I had realtors calling me and I had clients calling me and, and it was just incredible how everyone was, was trying to just manage one way or the other. Uh, buyers are trying to be, hey, if I don't buy this house, I'm gonna lose, you know, going to that night school and stuff like that. 20 grand, why not? And we also had sellers that, that like, you know what? I'm not, even, I'm not even gonna spend any money on the house just go ahead and sell it and <laughs> work out. Yeah, and, it, I, and it's I, been working, right? It, it's been working. I mean, everything is working for everyone. It's just everyone's trying to customize as far as how am I going to do this? And it was so very interesting. Here's one of the things that I thought was very interesting as well is that, you know, come early 2020, I'm like, I didn't, you know, first I, you guys heard me joke about it, right? I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to cure this COVID issue. I'm going to get it. I'm going to give it to everyone. We're all going to go through it together. We'll be fine. Right. And then, and then I got, I got like a cold or like a flu and I thought I was going to die and I was terrified, uh, you know? Um, but for me, I think the biggest thing was, you know, coming in January, February, you know, it was kind of, I was hearing more about it. Right. And I'm like thinking to myself, are we really going to close down? And, and then all of a sudden, you know, like end of February, March, early April, I'm like, what is going on right now? You know, I wasn't sure if I should be running some more quotes or if I should be getting some survival supplies. You know, I didn't really know what to do. Um, but one thing I do know is once mid to late April hit, I mean, you know, the my, my spring market for insurance, doing home insurance is gonna be kind of tied to you guys, right? So usually when people start buying homes, I guess, it's hard to say in our area for the last few years, but traditionally, maybe like around that March timeframe, you know, January, February, I'm, I'm still picking up things from the following year. March is like new business home sales and March was kind of stagnant. April, beginning of April was like crickets. And then mid to late April, it just shot up there. And I mean, I felt like I was doing a lot of work of like rewriting policies or hearing back that, you know, the appraisal came back way lower or, you know, people were doing silly things, right? I mean, you would, you'd give above asking price, maybe waiving one thing and you're still not getting the house because someone else is doing like, right? Like a hundred, hundred thousand dollars more cash offer, no contingencies. Like, I don't know if I maybe, and I, you know, I've, I've been on this side of the fence. Um, we're talking about these insurance or, or these real estate transactions, but have you guys ever seen that before? Like how much money will people are willing to not only pay over asking, but waiving everything in addition to sometimes not even really being there to see the home. Yeah. You know, uh, the, the, the big story and the, the one statistic I look at to give me it, a snapshot of what's happening in the market is the months of inventory, or you might hear it called the absorption rate. So uh, you're right. In, in March and April, things just died down. Um, nobody was really out selling or buying except people who absolutely had to. Uh, and then, you know, late April into May, it picked up again. Now, historically, a balanced real estate market is five or six months of inventory. 
And what, what we saw, uh, you know, going into this year, uh, I, we saw a, a little bit of that happening with over asking price, multiple offers. We've seen that for a couple of years because we've been around two months of inventory down to this year, 2020 was all 1.2 to 1.7 months of inventory in Northern Virginia. December 2020, for the first time ever, to my knowledge, there was under one month of inventory. And I just ran the numbers since we're a little over a month past Christmas. The inventory for the last 30 days is, is 0.75 months. So we're talking three weeks of inventory right now. So what that means is it's not just a seller's market. It's a, it's a stronger seller's market than it's ever been right now. So uh, from an appreciation standpoint in Northern Virginia, we've seen houses appreciate around four or 5% per year in total. Certain pockets were higher or lower, but uh, in 2020, they appreciate about 9%. So there's a lot of factors contributing to that. The low interest rates Colin talked about, the low inventory I was mentioning, um, all contributing. There's other factors too, like the millennial home buying demographic be, being the biggest generation ever. Getting married, having babies, high paying jobs, right? And that's driving demand. And meanwhile, folks are staying in their houses longer, living longer, not moving into long-term care or nursing facilities, but aging in place in their homes. We see more multi-generational homes. And so there's a lot of reasons that inventory is low and, uh, and demand is high right now. So um, we've seen it, but never to this extent, Tony. So that being said, right? Super, super, super high demand, super, super, super low supply. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that makes it even more important that we have a better batting average, right? There's literally less chance for us to mess this up. <laughs> um, Colin, ch chime in on this because I feel like, you know, having such high demand and such low inventory, I mean, I almost feel like that creates, if I needed to buy a house or I felt like I needed to buy a house, right? I mean, maybe even to get some advice you'd be telling me, I'd be like, no, 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 I, I need to, I, I need this house. Like, I know we can make this work. I mean, what, I guess, what well, you know what, beyond just the individual, right? Cause we all know people's individual buying habits can vary dramatically. Um, maybe it's, it's more important that we have like a team, right? Like managing the project together to help mitigate any potential issues. So um, tell me a little bit more about, I guess, your process when you're working with someone, but maybe just also outside of that loan process, what are you doing with, with your team of professionals? I know some of us are involved in that, but to help kind of keep the process smooth and moving in a positive direction. Definitely. So in terms of my process, I encourage anybody who I speak with who has any sort of interest in purchasing a home or even just had the idea in their head to get pre-approved as quickly as possible. Because, you know, as with anything, once you get the itch and start looking on your Zillow websites and whatever else, you're almost guaranteeing yourself that you're ready to buy a home. Because, you, you know, once you start looking, it's just so difficult to stop. So whenever you get pre-approved right away, whenever you first get the idea, it makes sure that you're prepared to pull the trigger whenever you're ready, because you just quite frankly don't know when that's going to be. Because as Ryan pointed out, with such low inventory, you might find the one. And um, to just be prepared for that, you want to do. Now, one of the other things that I do, especially in the current market, is go through the different contingencies that I'm asked about if they're prepared to waive an appraisal, if they're prepared to waive financing. Uh, home inspection is a little separate for me, so I don't really touch on that too much. But since financing and appraisal are both tied to it, I like to go through and just discuss the ramifications of a low appraisal or, um, you know, in terms of financing, we obviously do everything that we can prior to submitting the contract to make sure that if they're, you know, waiving the financing, that there's not going to be any hiccups that we have control over. Sometimes there's things that are outside of our control, but again, it's just kind of the preparation of them being ready to purchase a home. Now, in terms of working with team members to make sure it goes smoothly, one of the things that I always like to discuss with agents is, were there any issues with the home inspection? Because the last thing that you would want is to have, get past your home inspection contingency, and then there'd be issues after you get past that. So. 
I was just like keeping in touch to make sure that there are no issues with the home inspection. Um, and then in terms of other areas, if a client says, hey, I want to have these floors put in right away, you know, we kind of get that figured out to where we could say, hey, Diego can really help you with these floors as soon as you get in there. Because I've been seeing, you know, clients purchasing homes that just have issues that they were able to sell with some, some maybe cosmetic issues that they want fixed right away as soon as they get the keys. So that's where, you know, folks like Diego really come into play that they can help them. Yeah, Colin, I, uh, I want to echo that. And I think it's so important to have that team of people as a, as a realtor, I want to have people that I can trust, whether it's uh, Tony on the home insurance end, Colin on the loan end, uh, and then uh, people like Diego and John that I know can help my clients with uh, some home inspection issues or, or and I want to, uh, Diego, come back to you about flooring in a second, but what I'm getting at is you have to be prepared as a, as a home buyer in this market to, to compete. And uh, part of that is, is why I love working with Colin is I can trust his word. and I know um, how sure of a thing that these, these clients are, are uh, as far as financing, if, if they want to waive financing, which is, I don't recommend, but if you need to, sometimes you have to, and you want to know what's the risk associated with that. Um, and then if they're, depending on the, buyer's financial situation, we may approach an appraisal contingency uh, differently. So uh, this, uh, as a listing agent, I've heard many stories when we get offers on our listings where this buyer has missed out on four, five, six, seven houses, and they're desperate to get this house, right? Which is good for our sellers because they make really good offers. But when I'm working with a buyer, I want them to be prepared and not have to go through that. You know, almost every house my buyer clients purchased this year was multiple offer situations, many cases, five, eight, 10, 12 uh, plus offers. And uh, I never had a client last year have to make more than two offers on a house in order to get it accepted because we go through that preparation, education on the market, create a good relationship with the listing agent and have great professionals. So one of the things I love about working with John and Honeydew today is when we do that home inspection, which a large percentage of the time to get your offer accepted in this market, buyers have to um, take the home basically as is. And you can send a home inspection report to John's company and he'll, they'll, they'll help you um, gauge out how much is it going to cost to fix some of these things. And that way the buyers can make a good educated decision about whether or not to move forward with that house. Um, on the flip side, though, we we've been talking about how fast houses are selling, right? Multiple offers over list price. That's not always the case. So if you, if I could share a couple, I'm a numbers guy, so I'll share a couple of statistics real quick. Um, in this market, over half the homes for sale are selling in a week or less. It's like 55, 60%. 70% of the homes sell in a month or less, right? So that means three out of 10 houses are still taking over a month to sell. So it's not always the case that you can just do nothing as a seller to your house to get it ready and put it on the market. Uh, so with our seller clients, we always recommend they're going to get the, the biggest bang for their buck and sell for top dollar. If they can get their home cosmetically fixed up, I'm talking about paint, carpet, flooring. So I think it's worth the investment to bring in Diego to, to work on flooring and, and John to, fix uh, some home inspection items. Love for you guys to talk, to talk about that and just kind of um, sh share what's happened with some of your clients this year. Sure, uh, I'll go first. Uh, it makes it a lot easier whenever you're talking to a client and, and they feel comfortable that, you know, a, that they're coming in with a realtor that has a team that has all these services. Uh, and it helps me just because I know exactly, let's say when Brian brings me in uh, to a referral to a client, uh, I know exactly what Brian has said about me. So it, it makes it a lot easier for me to just go through the, the sell process and how to do everything. And if there's a problem or a bump, I know there's somebody else out there that's gonna help me. For example, if, if I do something and I go in and do some flooring, I know that John is gonna be there to do other stuff and services as well. And if there's any other problems, we're trying to build this this uh, team that pretty much is gonna take care of everything once the client is a client that's going in and they, they, they feel comfortable that, you know, hey, I'm going into this purchase of this, you know, $800,000 house 
and I know that I'm going to be taken care of just because, you know, I'm coming in with a team uh, that's going to service my future house. I mean, it, it's, it's critical to have that teamwork. You know, I, I can't tell you how many times, you know, we've gone in to, you know, kind of make an impact for, you know, listing and, uh, or, or, or a buyer wants to get set up in their new house. And it all starts with a good foundation. And that means flooring. And we can call Diego and he's out there, you know, immediately he gives us a price and he gives us a time and he hits it. And, and that comes from the teamwork, you know, and I'm grateful for all you guys uh, because in, in this market, you have to have the teamwork uh, to make the transactions go. You know, I, ha I have to know, I mean, and I do, you know, you guys tell me the numbers, you tell me the times and it gets done. And, and that comes from, you know, ha having that experience of working together. Uh, and I think that's half of what our customers you know, at least at Honeydew today, expect, you know, they want to know, well, that's great, John, but who can insure this and who can finance this and, you know, who can get this thing listed and, and floored, you know, I mean, that's, that's what it comes down to. It's teamwork. I think that that project management is extremely important, especially for the current environment within real estate, right? Um, especially when people have less time to do more um, it's even, it, it, you know, there's, there's certain things I, I mean, even with just, um, you know, you need your, your, your personal protection timing. Like you may not need to be, can't be in the house at the same time. You have to plan things out. I think Ryan, I was talking to you another earlier day about, um, open houses or, or you know, you got to kind of schedule, even having open houses, it was like showing a house, you have less opportunity because it's to be more spread out. You'd be distanced from other people. Um, so I think that project management is is just so key for fixing things in a timely fashion, because if you don't have, you know, Ryan kind of quarterbacking a transaction and being able to have Diego and John coordinate timing, but still falling in the time frame that Colin needs to get everything approved, you know, I'm kind of easy, right? Like I joke with them about, hey, this, I'm going to be the easiest component of buying this home. You know what I mean? We, we go through the quote. The quote's pretty self-explanatory. I send it over to them. I review the coverage say, hey, these are the basics that you need. There's two optional things I do recommend to you. You know, we want to fine tune this right here. Let's get rid of this and let's add more coverage here. Um, from there, I mean, the best part for me is when, you know, I know that either Colin sent them my way or maybe Ryan, you sent them my way, but then I find out they're working with Colin as well. And I go, hey, who's your lender? Oh, it's Colin Myers. Awesome. I'm like, I, I've worked with Colin plenty of times. I'll coordinate with him and his team, get them everything they need for closing. Uh, just consider this all to be done. Yeah, the and last thing I want is, is, that, is that last second rush and one company hasn't heard from the other company and contract with, with COVID sellers are, are very sensitive to COVID safety, most of, most of my seller clients. So when contractors aren't, aren't coming when they said to, or they're coming at the same time, like we talked about, it's not a good experience. And we aim to deliver as a team that amazing experience that'll make people um, happy and, and uh, encourage them to you know, refer all their friends to us because that's all we have is, is our good name. When, we're, when our clients are done and gone and moved on to their next house or they finished their floors or they, they got their loan, we're, we're just left here with our, with our good name. And that's what we try to aim uh, to work towards. You know, Tony, also from your point of, you know, from the insurance perspective, Diego and I see the aftermath when we're in sometimes making repairs. I know Diego is always tearing up flooring and, and putting down, you know, new stuff. And we see, you know, a lot of it is insurance money that comes in to pay for these things. And we see that's great. Somebody sold you a policy, but they didn't sell you the right policy. And even, and, you know, it's, it's one of those things that's just, you know, different there are a lot of different vendors in a home sale and you have to have the right ones and people that are pros at what they're doing absolutely absolutely i mean let's let's talk i want to go back towards the more of the um i guess the construction side of things we've talked a lot about buying right what about selling i mean it must be nice being on that side of the transaction over the last uh you know 365 days um even going to this topic, I want to kind of start with Diego, almost in a sense of maybe Diego and Ryan talking about selling a home, right? Uh, you know, I joked in the beginning saying you could 
you don't need to do anything to it, right? And you can still sell it. But although that might be true, maybe like, you know, we put in 50, we get back 80 kind of deal. I'm sure that's relevant as well. What is the impact right now of flooring and, you know, new flooring or, or getting it, you know, if they actually have hardwoods, you know, just doing refinishing, um, what is the impact of that right now for the, the seller's market? Well, uh, before, before the virus hit, we had a lot of uh, seller's market. And, and, and now we have a more like a buyer's market just because a lot of people either don't have time and don't, don't want to go through the whole hassle of getting the house ready. Uh, but then again, we, we, we do have these people that are trying to get the most out of the money. And once they, you know, Ryan will tell you, whenever they're, they're trying to get the, the house ready for sale, you know, the first thing that they, as soon as you open that door, you know, the first thing they see is the floor and paint, you know? And, and that's one thing I try to concentrate, just, just the looks of the house itself. Uh, and, 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 you know, changing the carpet, uh, sanding the floors, changing just minor things that just make it appear uh, that has been huge. And, and compared to what uh, getting a house ready for sale before was okay, we got to the, just the major thing to sell the house. It became a lot different now. Uh, a lot different being that, hey, we don't have time to do all this. Uh, let's just concentrate on this, this, and that. And, and I kind of became, I adjusted to what the clients wanted to do, the sellers. Said, okay, you know, I don't need to do the entire thing. You know, let me just concentrate on the stairs, just the, the, the most damaged uh, part of the house. And, and, and that's somewhat how it changed last year. Uh, and, and I see it now that a lot of people are leaving it for the, the buyers because the buyers, you know, once they buy the house, like uh, Colin said, you know, so, sometimes they, they haven't seen the house at all. So I don't see it. And once they're there, you know, they want to change it, you know, and that has in, uh, improved a lot compared to what it was before. It, it just uh, getting the house ready to sell is just an impact of the eye. For sure. And I think on top of that, it's a matter of, of convenience too. So if you'll allow me to stereotype for a second, um, like I said, millennials are the biggest home buying generation, but as a generation, we don't want to do anything, right? We want to be able to close on Friday, move in over the weekend and go back to work on Monday. Right? So that's what we're seeing a lot. And, and if a sellers have put in the work up front to fix the house up, paint, fresh carpet, uh, whether it's new floors or uh, Diego does an amazing job refinishing hardwood floors so they gleam like they're new. A millennial looks at that uh, and says, I don't have to do anything. And they're willing to pay a premium for that. Mm -hmm. That's where you hear some of these houses that have sold not just over list price, but even over the past comparable sales. Uh, it's because of the, of the zero work that Buyers have to do when they move in, and that's worth something in today's uh, in today's environment. That's Turnkey convenience, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. yeah, it's like that fifty dollar, you know, fifty dollar fee that they charge you over the grocery store. Yeah, <laughs> like that. <laughs> Which, by the way, I've been getting. I'm so frustrated with that now because people are still doing the pickup groceries, right? Yeah. But I don't know if you guys are noticing this. Like, they're allocating like twenty five parking spots in oh, yeah. front of the store and the most you'll ever see is like three or four cars there <laughs> grinds yeah. my gears grinds my gears yeah um john what's the most popular things that you guys are doing when someone's buying a home what are you guys fixing in there most consistently you know the, the big thing is is we go in and there's wood rot you know we live in northern virginia you know one of the sad things that we see oftentimes is you know, people will, when they buy a house and, and Colin can attest to this, you know, you get some t tax deductions and it's easy financing when you want that deck and, and you buy it as part of your mortgage. But what comes with that deck is some, a lot of times just minimal maintenance, power wash it, keep it stained and sealed. If you don't do that here in Virginia, 
it's going to rot. If you're over in Burke, you're over in Lake Barcroft, these are humid, hot environments with, you know, all kinds of organic material. These big, heavy beams are going to rot. And if you don't take care of them for a couple seasons, oftentimes we're out there and it's, no, it really can't be fixed or it's a big expensive fix and you need a new deck. And paying for it then is a lot different than financing that into your mortgage. And so mm. that's a big thing that we see a lot of times. Same thing with the floors. I mean, if you're going to, you know, if, I know Colin has products that you can get some improvements uh, into your mortgage at the, at the get-go. You know, I mean, getting nice hardwood floors, you know, Ryan can tell you, it really adds to the value of the, of the house, but there's a better time to do it. And so, you know, we go into houses a lot of times we're referring Diego to come in, you know, put in some, especially for the big ticket hardwood floors, do that up front, get it financed properly, you know, get some good advice on, on what it's really going to do to the value of your house. It's going to help. Uh, those are the things we see. So something you said there makes me, I think as we close this, right, one of the things you just said to kind of picks on my brain is that, you know, waiting till it's a problem is typically a problem. Right. But when we do the small things along the way to keep it well maintained, that's kind of where we win. Right. Isn't that the story of life and everything? Whether we're Absolutely. talking finance, we're talking health, you know, but we're here today talking about real estate. And so, yes, it's doing the fine, you know, the finer things, building your real estate team, getting the true professionals, getting some some people that work together and, and, and know each other and, and, and attacking you know, you can really win in this environment. Don't, don't be that guy or girl in uh, 2021 when they're giving away free money pretty much for interest rates and you didn't get a house. Yep. <laughs> and on the other end of the spectrum, don't try to don't try to refinance your car when it's on the repo man's tow truck already, yeah. right? <laughs> Act now while you can. Um, in closing, I want to go to everybody one more time. If you could give us just maybe one tip, all right? whether it's like a little maintenance tip um, to, to kind of just add value, add ease to this process for anybody. Um, give you an example, you know, I'll start with this. And, you know, my one tip is that we're going through a lot of different items for this home buying process, right? Sometimes things get rushed through. Your insurance is this big out of the entire spectrum of documents and things you need to do for buying a home and moving in. But when you call me six months down the road, and the wedding ring is gone. And we're wondering how we're going to cover, you know, twelve thousand dollars. It, it's going to be important that you and I had that thirty-minute additional conversation. You know what I mean? So take the time uh, to to check all the boxes. You know, thirty minutes to an hour can go a long way when you really need it in the end. Ryan. Yeah, I would just say this is kind of a general tip, but take the time to prepare. When I'm working with home buyers, we sit down sometimes for three hours for an initial consultation. And I don't think a lot of people do that. And they go in and they have to miss out on a house or two or three before they kind of learn what's happening in the market. Prepare ahead of time, work with the professional, um, you know, ask your realtor to, to work with a trusted lender, a trusted insurance agent, trusted contractors, because um, you never know who you might get if you just find somebody off the internet. Colin. Yeah, just kind of echoing Ryan is just be, get pre-approved early. Even if you're not 100% certain you're ready to purchase a house a week from now, a year from now, it's just better to be prepared for it. Um, that way, whenever you do find the right one, you can just pull the trigger. And even, unfortunately, at our point in time, we're seeing some issues such as fraud, so credit fraud or what have you. And so preparing early, getting pre-approved early just helps, helps clients tremendously whenever they are ready to purchase the home. Um, and it just, it really prepares them and it gets them to understand everything that goes into financing a home because it's more than just down payment, monthly payment. There's costs that go into it that they should really be educated about and really be prepared for. Awesome. John. Stay on top of it. You know, your, your maintenance, stay up to date. You know, it, it, again, it's the secret to everything. Keep, keep little down, problems, little problems. Yep. Nip, nip them in the bud. Yep. 
Diego, final tip for us today. Uh, be prepared and hire a professional. Uh, a big chunk of my job, my work last year was people trying to do themselves and not hire a professional that can actually do it right the first time. Awesome. Well, here we are, guys. Just uh, five guys talking to the internet. Hopefully, hopefully some people will watch this, get some laughs, get some value. Um, I know we're definitely going to do some more sessions here in the upcoming future. Um, but for now, happy Friday. Everybody have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you soon.